Hello everyone, welcome to Just Born Movies, a film show we take films straight out of the Hollywood womb and dissect them for you. Uh, I'm Manny Classic, and my guest today... David Ray. David, what did we go see? Well, we started with Super Troopers 2. It's a sequel to Super Troopers, uh, you know, same as before, a bunch of Vermont Highway Patrol up to shenanigans. And somehow solving crime at the same time. Un, deux, trois... Let's do it! They've been waiting for a second chance. Waiting for their country to need them again. That time is... Meow. Farber, can I get a radio check? <laughs> I love it. It's like we never left. Super Troopers, what do you think about it? Yeah, I thought it was typical comedy fair. I mean... You know, it had its a lot of throwbacks to the previous Super Troopers, which probably would have missed had we not just seen the first one. True. The uh, it's almost like a like a greatest hits album, but of a band that only put out one song. Yep, Sizzling Bacon. Yeah. <laughs> like um, I don't know the jokes. I don't know if it's necessarily we had just seen the first one, but like the jokes were just the same jokes. Yeah. Um, uh, they had a couple new ones, but for the most part it was rinse, wash, repeat. Yeah, I believe it's called an homage. Uh, no, I think it's called plagiarism, but can can't you really play, plagiarize yourself? Can't plagiarize yourself. <laughs> That's how that works. It's kind of like Clapton doing the unplug Layla. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> like it's, it's technically the same song, but is it is it any good? I mean... Paul would have been very happy there since they specifically mentioned Rush. And we yeah, know how much he loves Rush. There was a lot of Rush. Surprisingly, Tom Sawyer was used in the trailer, but not in the actual movie. Which I really enjoyed because <laughs> Rush sucks. But you notice, I looked in the credits. They did not credit a single Rush song in the credits. But there, there were a number of times you heard it in the background. That's right. Like, in the like setting-wise, they played Rush, but they didn't use it as like part of the soundtrack. Well, like accord, according to this movie, Rush is just part of the public domain in Canada, since they're both from the same year. <laughs> there's, a, there's a couple jokes, a uh, couple social commentary jokes. Yeah. Uh, particularly, they, they screw around with talking about American health care, or lack thereof. Yeah. It's, like, it's like, so when were you guys, like, uh, are you guys independent now, or...? Yeah, we got three in 1982. Oh, well, why is the queen all over your money? Oh, because if we were founded earlier, maybe we would not have uh, socialized health care. <laughs> yeah, we would have rampant, uh, <laughs> rampant, rampant, gu rampant gun use and... <laughs> Childhood obesity. <laughs> the nice thing about it was, like, it was early on and then they stopped. Like, it wasn't the entire movie. Yeah. Like, I think if they had done a social commentary through the entire thing, it would have hurt the film. I think it's weird they're talking about obesity. They had Will Sasso deliver that line. <laughs> well, you know. Of course, we, we got some Canadian kind of stereotype things. Um, like, apparently the whole country just shut down. The whole the whole city in particular, they're in shut down for hockey night in Canada. Yeah, so no, who's calling? Yeah. Who even owns a landline? <laughs> yeah, so, I mean... Yeah, there was a lot of a lot of stereotyping, both sides of it. Both, yeah, you know, on the Ameri tor the Canadians towards the Americans, the Americans towards the Canadians, and then just an overall, um, you know, typical Hollywood comedy. Though I mean, I wouldn't say there was anything stellar or stand out about it. Um, acting was pretty much the same as it was in Super Troopers. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, they had the same cast with a couple of new faces. Yeah. So. You pretty much get uh, everyone from the Broken Losers comedy troupe, which is a bunch of guys that I can't remember their names. They're, in particular, their last names. You know, it's like, yeah, it's like Paul's phone <laughs> going off. Because, once again, Paul is wrong. <laughs> so you get, like, a Kevin Heffernan and Eric uh, Stolhansky, I believe is his name, Jay Shandrazar, and the dude who plays uh, Rabbit, who's, or Mac, who I always forget what his name is. That may or may not be here. It's not really pertinent to the conversation. Steve so. Lemmy. Steve Lemmy. There we go. Yeah. Um, you get uh, Linda Carter actually makes a return yep. as governor of Vermont. You think by now she would have been out of office given the amount of time between this movie and the last movie. Um, even though it apparently takes place like two weeks later, honestly. Yeah, I'm, they, they specifically make mention to the fact that they work for the, the you know, the... 
highway patrol office they worked for got shut down and they went to work for for Spurnberry's police department after they got everybody in Spurnberry police department arrested except for uh, Ursula who was played by what was her name whatever her name is she's now the chief of police yep so obviously she's still around um, you, know, you, you get some you get some commentary like things like they did in the first one like you know in the first one Farva couldn't couldn't be on the street because of the school bus incident. This time, they they all lost their Spurnberry police jobs because of uh, the Fred Savage incident, which you get to see in the final credits. But yeah, kind of the same thing. Uh, the same way they played the the Farva incident. It's talked about throughout the entire movie, but you don't actually get to see it until after credit scene. Uh, well, mid credit scene because we do get an after credit scene, which is something else. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's. It was a it was a fine movie. There were some hearty chuckles that that took place. Um, yeah, they definitely know how to deliver their brand of comedy. They just nothing again stands out. The acting wasn't you know Oscar nominee. The you know nothing was above above a C. Maybe a couple of B minus jokes in there. Yeah, um, if you saw the first Super Troopers or. Uh, Broken Lizards Club Dread. It's pretty much the same thing you're going to get. Um, it has its moments if you like that type of humor. It's uh, it's almost like the video that me and Paul did for Drinking Age where I talk about John Leguizamo's humor. I like John Leguizamo's humor, which is immediately going to turn half of you off right now. Guaranteed. Because you either love his humor or you hate his humor. There's no fence sitting. There's no in between. Either you're gonna get this movie and you're gonna be like, "Oh man, this movie's really great," or you're just gonna hate it. Um, especially because it treads so much kind of of the same ground. Yeah, I mean, it it pretty much is. I mean, the setting changes, the ancillary characters change, but not a whole lot of the comedy changes. Yeah. Um, Rob Lowe is pretty funny for what he's given. Um, he he plays the mayor of this Canadian town, Saint Georges du Laurent. Um, and he's a typical Canadian. He's like an ex hockey player who never made it to the bigs, and now he's this town mayor. And of course, uh, being a, a professional hockey player, he's a He's a local legend and et cetera, you know, playing on that trope of Canadians and hockey. So. That's right. He's the Halifax Explosion is was his <laughs> hockey nickname. Yep. Whatever. And they explain that, but I honestly don't remember what that was. So apparently he scored a whole bunch in his minor league team, but his name is based on a ship that was full of explosives that crashed into another ship, making Rob Lowe, according to him, the second Hal- the second biggest Halifax explosion. So, yeah. It's just, uh, like I said, uh, if you like the first one, you're probably going to like this one. Yep. Yeah, if you like that, if you like Super Troopers, Dumb and Dumber, or any of those classic early 90s, late 80s, late 90s comedies, you're going to like this one. And Super Troopers was released in like 2008, some whatever shit like it was. 2001. Yeah. 2001. It, that's late 90s as far as I'm concerned. I'm old. <laughs> My acting was all right. The jokes, while occasionally funny, I don't think were uh, new or inventive. They didn't push anything. Um, you get some great cameos Fred Savage, Linda Carter. Um, Rob Lowe might as well be a cameo for the actual amount of screen time he has. Um, based on our scale, I just think it's damn average. Yeah, looking back at it, um, having seen the comedy pretty much all throughout Super Troopers, just basically carry into Super Troopers 2 and then saying... Hey, how can we rework this joke so that it's a throwback to the first one? And the acting was okay. The plot was predictable, more or less kind of boring. If it wasn't for the humor, it wouldn't be worth watching. Uh, I think it's damn average as well. 
So there you go. Super Troopers 2. Avrage. Let us know. Uh, did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you wish the troopers were super -er? Comment down below. Also, don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notifications when we release new videos. And don't forget to uh, thumb around on the channel. See what we're doing. we got a bunch of stuff in the works and a bunch of old videos that I think you might enjoy. And if you really like our content, feel free to swing by our Patreon and give us some helping hands. Yeah, that's at patreon.com forward slash drinking age movies. Um, it's David Ray, Manny Classic. Seeing as I don't have a show anymore, here's the new catchphrase. That was it. <laughs>